Hey, hey friends, this is Jessie DeShane, a chronic illness support coach and host over here on the Chronically Healing Podcast. When I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, I was scared and immediately started looking for support. After finding so much negativity in the autoimmune world, I decided to start a community that emphasizes positivity and healing. On this show, you will hear me have conversations with people just like you who are on their own unique healing journey with chronic illness. There might be a few tears, but you are guaranteed to have a bunch of laughs and lots and lots of love and support. Let's dive into the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Chronically Healing Podcast. I am your host, Jesse Fritz, and I am so excited to be doing a solo episode with you today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jesse. Like I said before, I am an empowerment coach for women living with chronic illness who want to take back their life from illness and really step into their own power. If you don't follow me already, make sure to head on over to chronically.healing on Instagram. We chat every single day over there. I share all of my routines. I share all about my life over there. So if you are not already following me on Instagram, make sure that you do. And then the next order of business here is if you haven't already, please leave a review of the podcast. It would be so, so helpful. Basically, anytime you leave a review, it helps us show up more in search and it helps us just grow as a podcast so that people can find out more and can hear about what's happening over here on the Chronically Healing Podcast. So with that, why don't we jump into today's episode? Wow, I can speak into today's episode. (laughs) Today's episode is a solo chat, like I said, about something that's very important to me. Can you guess it? I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, okay, it's morning routines. You already knew that. Maybe you didn't. If you follow me on Instagram, like I said before, you would know that I have a slight obsession with morning routines. So I want to tell you why I'm so obsessed. So before you immediately disregard the importance of a morning routine, give me just a few minutes to explain. I have always been a huge proponent of having a morning routine. I mean, I guess at least in the last five years or so. It actually started out because I noticed that the days that I got up like 30 minutes before I needed to be out the door, I felt awful in comparison to the weekends when I didn't have to be as rushed. Now, to all of us who work full-time, this can be difficult. Obviously, we can't just like choose which days we want our schedule to be unless we're working for ourselves full-time, which is totally my goal, but not there yet. You don't want to miss out on your sleep. That is huge. But truly, the amount of anxiety that my day started out when I had to rush around the house and get out and to work on time just made me pissed off at the world. If I'm being completely honest, it just made me like a cranky, anxious human when I didn't give myself some time in the morning. So I slowly started adding in some time for myself from working out, which is actually how I started because I was too tired at the end of the day to work out, to a few years later giving myself even just a half hour to cuddle with my dog before heading out to work. Trust me, the dog thing makes it, makes it so much easier. It killed me every day to leave her in the morning without taking some time to sit and cuddle with her, especially when she was a baby. Oh my god, those puppy dog eyes. Am I right? She still has those, unfortunately. She's quite the powder, so I mean, it's always hard to get out of my house. But anyway, that's not the point. We're not talking about Cora today, although I would love to every single day. That's also why I got into meditation. I was going to a job that I absolutely hated where I was bored half the time, and then I also had a psychopath boss. So meditation really helped me to set myself up for success with a little less anger and anxiety to start the day, even just for three minutes, which is all that I could muster when I first got started. The first two, no, the first year of meditation, I would only meditate for three minutes and it truly changed my life, truly. So why am I telling you all of this? Because I want to help you incorporate a morning routine too. I refuse to believe you if you tell me you don't have time. You can always take a few minutes out of your day. And guess what? That doesn't have to be meditation. It doesn't have to include journaling, even though those are things that are in my morning routine. And I feel like in everybody's morning routine that talks about morning routines, but truly like I've talked to clients about this before. You don't need to be doing meditation or journaling if they don't work for you, but we'll get into this and why it's important to care about what actually works for you versus what works for me. Like I was just saying, a morning routine has to make sense for you. 
You're not going to wake up an hour earlier each day because some chick on a podcast told you that you should. Trust me, it doesn't work. I tried it. It just doesn't work. Instead, what is something that you want to accomplish? Do you want to start your own business, your own podcast, your own blog, Instagram, any of that kind of stuff? Or maybe you just want five minutes without your kids or your partner bothering you. Whatever it is, the reason needs to make sense for Y-O-U. Not for me, not for Sandy down the road. It's about you. A few weeks ago, I read the book Good Morning, Good Life by Amy Landino, which I highly recommend, by the way. She's an entrepreneur, YouTuber, author, and podcast host of Detail Therapy. I had to force myself to read her book as slow as possible because I didn't want it to end. That's how good I was. To give a quick summary without giving the book away or stopping you from reading it yourself, seriously, Amazon the book right now, she said every strong morning routine includes three aspects. And they all start with M, so it's super easy to remember. Here they are. Write them down. Burn them into your memory. (laughs) Movement, mindfulness, and mastery. I love that Amy puts it so easily, but let's break them down. So movement. Movement can be as easy as getting up and doing your skincare routine. Moving the skin on your face and waking yourself up, walking to the bathroom. It can also be working out, taking a walk or stretching, yoga in the morning, whatever fits in the routine for you. For me in the morning, um, it's usually something like picking up a few things around the house, stretching a bit, and dry brushing before I take a shower. Second, mindfulness. Mindfulness can be as easy as taking a few moments to truly be in the moment or doing a full-blown journaling or meditation session, whatever works for you. You can do future journaling or morning pages if you like to write or do a guided visualization for three to five minutes before starting your full day. For me, I try to get in at least a short meditation and a journaling sesh, but if I can't do that, I make sure to take a few moments to cuddle with Cora while looking out the window and being grateful for the beautiful house that we rent here in the Chicago suburbs and how much better I feel to be out here in the suburbs versus the city. I know most of you probably think I'm weird, but let me just say I will never live in the city of Chicago again. You couldn't pay me to do it. (laughs) Moving on to the third M, which is mastery. Mastery is an interesting one that I never thought about, but makes so much sense. This can be reading a few pages of a good book, doing a goal setting session or brainstorming, or even taking the time to learn a new language if you're fancy like that. This is also a great time to fit in some time for that part I was talking about earlier. Why do you want to wake up earlier? If it's to start a blog, you can take some time to read other blogs or research web designers you could work with. If this is just time where you can spend time doing something that you love, go out and garden before people wake up or teach yourself how to give yourself your own manicure. I'm literally just making stuff up because it's totally up to you. For me, I've been reading a few books, a few pages of a book, usually a self-development type book like the one by Amy Landino that I was just talking about. My other favorite that I've been reading is You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. It's like an amazing book. Those are a couple of ways that I try to get in mastery in the morning. And those are actually the areas that I changed up. So I wasn't doing, I was doing some mindfulness stuff and I mean movement, I guess, kind of just moving around my house. But it was really the mastery part that that got me going. It was reading even just two pages of a book before I jump in the shower and it totally changed my perspective on the day. Let me quickly take you through my morning routine so you can see it all wrapped up into one in one little present so you guys can just see exactly what I'm talking about and how it all fits together because you're probably like, okay, mastery, mindfulness, and movement, got it. What does that actually mean? So let me take you through like what I do every single day. I will put one little disclaimer on the days that I go into the city um, because I am now required to go in a couple of days a week. I do the most important pieces of my morning routine or the ones that just quote unquote feel right in the moment to shorten it. So for reference, I work from home three days a week and then um, I give myself like an hour and a half to two hours to kind of start my day. On days that I work in the city, I have just about an hour to do a morning routine and get ready and get out the door. So here's my day. If it were my perfect morning routine, 
which most days aren't, but let's just walk through that. So first off, the biggest trick in your morning routine is, are you ready for it? That your morning routine actually starts the night before. I know it's a morning routine and I'm talking about nighttime, but truly (laughs) that is actually how you have a successful morning routine. It's how you set yourself up for that the night before. I am not a morning person and it takes a while for my brain to kick in. So I try to make as many decisions the night before that I can. I pick out my outfit if I'm going to be working in the city, I look through my schedule for the next day, I set out my supplements, and I make myself some coffee so it's prepped nice and cold for the next day. Um, I've been loving iced coffee lately, otherwise I would just um, like make it up in the morning. And then I'll just set out anything else that I might need so I'm just ready to go. It's waiting for me when I wake up in the morning and I literally don't have to think about a thing. It's now morning time. My alarm goes off, I get super ticked at it, and I lazily take my thyroid medication for my Hashimoto's and drink as much water as I can to get it all down and to get my day started drinking as much water as possible. Um, Up until honestly like two months ago, I would immediately like not drink any water besides what I took with my medication. And I just realized that I was like chronically dehydrated throughout the day. So It's really easy in the morning again because I have no idea what's actually going on. I'm totally like zombied out. So I just drink as much water as I possibly can in the morning. I grab my supplement pack for the day, my water, um, like glass, my glasses, and I head downstairs with Cora. My routine starts with her. So I let her outside and give her her food and then go to the bathroom. From there, I'll usually sit down on the couch with her to cuddle or meditate if my husband isn't up already making noise. This is my mindfulness time. Plus, it's my, hey body, let's wake up time. (laughs) That's really important to me. I will say it's winter here right now in Chicago. So when it's summertime and springtime, I'll probably do a little bit more outside time in the morning because I do have a yard. It is a private space, which is the whole reason that I moved to the suburbs. So I will be bringing some of that morning routine outside, but for now we stay inside because it's cold. From there, these things kind of jump around a bit depending on the day, but from there I'll usually pull out my morning pages journal and then my affirmations and gratitude journal, then my future self journal. Yes, I have three journals. I also have a nighttime journal, but that's a whole other story. I'm a writer though. I love creating content. I've always been a writer. So for me, journaling is huge. I like to do morning pages because I can kind of get all the like icky thoughts out of my head. I can write about my dreams. It's literally this phenomena that um, I read about again in Amy Landino's book where I'm just getting the thoughts out of my head. A lot of times my journaling doesn't really make sense, but I'm just trying to, you know, if you wake up in a bad mood, instead of just sitting and percolating in it, I'm just writing it down and I'm getting it out of my body. So that is my first journal. But then I want to move into more of like positive journaling. So that's, I always do my gratitude journal and my affirmations. So those will be things like, I'm grateful for my house. I'm grateful for Cora. I'm grateful for Ben. I'm grateful for all the wonderful people that listen to my podcast. And then I'll say things like, I am wealthy. These are affirmations. I am um, love. I am ready to be a millionaire. I am ready to change hundreds of women's lives. I am a coach, those kinds of things where I can really set myself up for success. And then I'll turn into my future self journal, which for me, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what works best for me. But a lot of times this will be where I'm thanking the universe for all of the things that I am trying to manifest in my life, whether that is more money or a job or my own business or new coaching clients, all of those kinds of things. So I will kind of spend that time being grateful for things that I know are going to happen, but haven't quite yet. I should probably do a whole podcast on journaling, honestly, because you're probably all like, okay, that sounds woo woo and crazy, but trust me, it's amazing. So on the days that I go into the city though, or if my brain is just like not having it and I'm not feeling like writing, I'll just do one of the three journals, whichever one is feeling best for me. Um, Obviously too, if I need to like 
cut it out, then I will. But even on a good day, I don't really spend more than 10 minutes doing this journaling. So it's not, journaling I think sounds overwhelming when really it doesn't need to be. I don't spend that much time doing it. After that, I will take a quick moment. It's the only time I really touch my phone besides to turn off my alarm in the morning. And I will send a voice memo to my best friend, Michelle, who you guys would have heard on the last episode. If you haven't listened to that yet, go and listen to it. It's all about friendship with chronic illness, but it's mostly, honestly, just like how to make friends in general as a woman. (laughs) So go and listen to that. But we have been doing this thing every morning now for just over a year where we voice memo each other a few things. So I will voice memo her a few things that I'm grateful for. Then I will send her, this is all in one memo, but I will send her my affirmation for the day and any goals that I have for the day. Sometimes my goals are don't have an anxiety attack on the train and sometimes my goals are a little bit more specific and then she is um, on the west coast so she usually sends me hers about two hours later so I don't have to worry about being interrupted um, by a text or anything like that at that point I just send her off my gratitude in the morning I catch up with her and then I head off to the next part of my morning routine So after that, I head to the bathroom for a new part to my routine that I just started doing after reading Good Morning, Good Life, which is taking a shower. Sounds super random, but I've always been a nighttime shower girl. However, I have been loving waking up, taking a shower in the morning with sunlight coming in into the shower window. I honestly, my showers most of the time are just rinsing off, so they're less than like three minutes. I just kind of jump in, jump out, and some days they're a little bit longer. But it just helps me feel really good. It kind of awakens my senses because I'm being hit with water and I get to start off my day feeling clean and like I'm taking care of myself, which is important since I work from home and don't technically need to do much to get myself ready for work since no one's really going to see me besides Ben and my dog. I've also been dry brushing before jumping in the shower, but honestly, I'm not quite sure like what's happening with that. I don't really understand dry brushing, but I have one, so I have been trying that out. I'll just dry brush really quickly and then jump into the shower. After my shower, I put on lotion on my face and body. I brush my teeth, put on deodorant, and anything else I need to do to get ready. I'll head downstairs and usually clean up a few things. For me, starting my day with a tidy space is important. So I'll put away any clean dishes, pick up little things laying around, and fold any blankets that were, you know, still all over the place from the night before. Taking those five or so minutes to do that really makes me feel great stepping into my day particularly because I'm working from home so I can kind of see the little mess all day long. And then I'll grab a book and my coffee at this point. Any of you on medication probably know this, but I have to wait at least an hour before having coffee or anything to eat in order to let my thyroid medication kick in in the morning. So I usually wait at least an hour to get going on that. And within that time, I've done most of my morning routine that I already told you about. I'll sit down, drink my coffee, read, and sometimes talk to Ben at that point, depending if I'm crabby or not, because I'm truly not a morning person. (laughs) Or if he's in the middle of his routine, then obviously um, I'm not going to just talk to him while he's trying to meditate. About 15 to 20 minutes before work starts, I'll put down my book, head upstairs and get dressed for the day, maybe slap on some makeup um, and or do my hair if I need to, but most days I don't. And that is my perfect day morning routine. On my shorter mornings, I'll usually do a short meditation because this is like kind of the most important thing to me when I'm going into the city because those days my anxiety is much, much higher. So I'll do the short meditation, maybe journal something quickly and take a shower, clean up a bit, like pick up little things before getting ready. I do not like feeling rushed in the morning, so I always have my meals and everything I need set out the night before. Like I said before, biggest hurdle, getting all the stuff figured out the night before so you don't have to make any big decisions in the morning, like what lunch am I going to bring with me? The shower and meditation have really helped me on the days that I have a shorter morning, but I need to start my day off in a chill way so that I don't add any anxiety to my plate, any extra anxiety. So 
those two things really tend to chill me out a little bit. One of my favorite ways to work with people is by dissecting their morning routines. This is how much I believe in them. You truly need to be starting your day off in the best possible way for you in order to see any increase in your energy. I work with my clients on perfecting this, but also I do do... (laughs) do do I do one-off sessions with people who just want to learn about what they could be doing in their morning routine how they could change things around in fact in the month of March I'm doing a little special I'm going to be doing 25 minute morning routine audits for anyone that mentions that they heard this podcast throughout the month and um, it'll be just 30 bucks so shoot me an email at jessiefritzcoaching at gmail.com that's j-e-s-s-i-e-f-r-i-t-z coaching at gmail.com or you can dm me on instagram over at chronically.healing um it's spelled the same way as a podcast there's just a period in between chronically and healing so you can dm me there too if you would like to purchase one of these sessions It'll basically just be me going through your morning routine with you or an afternoon routine if you have your morning routine all figured out and I'll help you come up with better ways to really enhance your energy and take advantage of whatever kind of time that you have in the morning. So shoot me an email or a DM if you're interested in that. One other thing that I can tell you guys, I do have a free meditation guide. So it's basically 10 steps on how to get started with meditation in an easy way. I promise it's not crazy and it's totally free. So if you have even been slightly interested in meditation, but it seems super overwhelming, again, shoot me a message on email or on Instagram and I can send that over to you. Literally no strings attached. I just want everybody to understand like how great even three minutes of meditation can be. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's podcast. That's it. That's me rambling about morning routines. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about why I think morning routines are important and why I think they're imperative for every single human in order to enhance their energy throughout the day. With that, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.